Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my paulonia trees. But in particular I want to focus on this one here which is my tallest paulonia tree. I want to see how much it's grown since the last update which was back in spring. And I'll talk about how the growth has been throughout the summer. So all the paulonia trees I'm about to show you in this video I grew from seed. I've talked about these in previous videos but I'll just give you a quick catch up in case you've not seen those. So basically I germinated the seeds last year. It was a hybrid type of seed but the seeds didn't grow uniformly, so each plant was slightly different to each other. There's a lot of genetic variation. This is supposed to be a Pao Tong hybrid, but I think this is actually the seeds collected from the Pao Tong hybrid and not the first generation of the hybrid. So there's a lot of genetic variation. It's a three species hybrid cross as well. So it's got lots of different parentage in it, which means that genetics are quite bearable. There's a lot of different genes that can mix around and it is supposed to be the fastest growing tree in the world and looking at this one this year I think that's definitely the case. So as I say germinated last year most of them only grow about a foot in height last summer this year though this one's gone really tall and it's just over three meters in height so this one here is the one that I have in the ground. This one had the best potential from the beginning. It always has slightly bigger leaves than the other plants and just seemed to grow a little bit more vigorously. So this is the one I decided to plant in my garden. The rest I'm keeping in pots and I might keep one or two if they've got interesting characteristics. But generally I'll just keep one or two in, in my garden because they are such big and fast growing trees. So this paulonia tree at the beginning of spring was only about 30 centimeters in height. As you can see it is now 10 times as tall. It is now about 3 meters 10 centimeters in height so it's almost grown three meters and in fact it probably will grow about three meters in this growing season I reckon it will probably grow another 10-15 centimeters before the frosts come but I want to show you it now because we've had a lot of storms recently and there is a risk that we could have some frost soon and as you can see some of the leaves are already looking ripped this did look a bit nicer a few weeks ago but I wanted to show you at its fullest height if I wait a bit longer the leaves will be really ripped and it might be taller but it might not be such an impressive looking tree by then so as I say this was really small last spring in fact if I step back and give you an overview of the bed I'll then superimpose an image from spring and you'll be able to see what a difference there was with this bed was completely bare in spring and now everything's just shot up so as you can see lots of plants have grown but this one paulonia has outcompeted all the other plants even though this was one of the smallest plants in this at the beginning of the year so the thing with paulonia trees is the pioneer species what they do is they have very small seeds which can blow a long distance they blow onto open ground and the way that they outcompete other plants is they just grow much faster and put out big leaves and they try and get established before other trees can get established and other plants. So the way that this works is when they get going, they get going really quickly and they can outcompete everything else. But if they get shaded out, they won't actually do well. If there's any competition with other plants, they normally get shaded out themselves. But their goal is to get up and above the other plants before they get shaded out. So it worked here because, as I say, it would have been shaded out if it had stayed small but it just shot up and it got bigger than all the other plants in this bed. So I'm going to come in a bit closer now and show you how low down it actually was at the beginning of the year. So you can see here, all this growth is one year's growth. You can tell that because the leaves directly attach to the stem and the stem is green. So this is all this year's growth. Now my hand isn't very good for scale because I'm six foot five, so almost two meters. So I'm not very good at sewing scale with my hands because they're quite large. But as you can see, this is a really thick stem, especially as this is only one year old. So I'll come down now and I'll show you the height that the stem was originally. So right down now at the base of the plant, and as you can see, there's this little, little twig sticking out the end here. This is basically where the plant got frost damaged in, in last winter. With paulonia trees, they are hardy, but sometimes the newer, freshest growth, before it's hardened off, it's not completely hardy and you get a little bit of dieback at the top. That's the existing part of last year's stem. I'll then, I'll then now show you a picture of how this looked in spring. With it, that was the actual tip, the growing point. What then happened is it grew three shoots. So there was this one here, and there was a weak one at the side, and then there was this main one. This one, I think, was actually slightly stronger for a while. And then this one kind of took over, and then this has become the dominant stem. And the other two really haven't grown much since spring. But you can see how much that's thickened up, especially when you consider that most of the stem was about the thickness of that little tiny bit there. The whole thing is thickened up really well and towards the bottom it's actually flared a lot and it's got a lot of thickness from the wind moving it around and at the bottom there is what's called a lignotuber and that's a swelling at the base of the plant that's part of the reason paulonias can grow so quickly what they do is they have a special kind of swollen root storage system which is a bit like a tuba it stores a lot of energy and that means if it gets damaged by fire or gets snapped off in the wind or maybe a herbivore comes along and, and 
eats it, it has a lot of stored energy underground, it can then use that to grow up really rapidly and really quickly. And that's exactly what I think this plant did last year. As I say, it grew to about one foot in height, it then stopped growing about mid-summer, it then put all the energy for the rest of the summer into its lignotuber, stored up lots of energy and that gave it the kickstart that it needed to get growing this year. And what I'll do is I'll show you some photos now and show you how it's done throughout the season and how it's grown. So it started off quite small, a little bit slow growing as well because this likes a bit more of a subtropical climate or a warm temperate climate. I'm here in North Scotland so the growth wasn't as quick as it could have been but basically it started growing a little bit slow in spring, some new shoots appeared they didn't do much for the first few weeks until it really started to warm up. Then around July time when the warm weather came, it really started to get turbocharged and come into good growth. Now with all that energy that it had stored up, it managed to produce a few large leaves. Those large leaves then allowed the plant to gather even more energy from the sun and then just turbocharge its growth. And it's just basically continued throughout the summer, month after month, getting bigger leaves more and faster and faster growth until it's grown to the size that it is now. So it has slowed down, it is now October, towards the middle of October, the growth has slowed right down, the daylight is very weak here in Scotland at this time of year, and this is actually shaded by my house for half the day. Also the temperature is only around 10 degrees in the, in the daytime, 5 degrees at night, so really too cold for it to grow, and I suspect the first frost will come in a week or two and all the leaves will fall off this but if it was still warm, this would still be romping away, growing really quickly. And you can see that from the shoot. It doesn't show any signs of slowing down. There's still lots of new leaves being developed at the top of the, the stem there. So it would definitely try and keep growing if it could, but just because the weather's starting to cool down now, the growth will completely cease soon and I'll go into its dormancy. So I've been really happy with how fast this has grown. Absolutely phenomenal growth, considering this wasn't coppice and this is just a growth that it's put on by itself and whatever energy it stored last year. This is truly phenomenal because paulonia trees, although they do grow really fast in the first few years, the fastest growth actually comes when you start pollarding them. Because this plant now is quite large, it will have a big root system to support this large growth above ground. So when I cut it down this year, that large root system will still be there, but there'll only be a small shoot for it to support. And so it will grow up much, much faster because when this started growing in spring, it was a small plant with a small root system. So it had to grow its root system and the top half at the same time. But next year it won't have to grow much of its root system at the beginning of the, of the summer. It will just have to grow the top half and then towards the middle of the summer once it gets about this size again it will then have to grow both the root system and the top half of its growth. So what I'm going to do this autumn is I'm going to cut it down where about it grew from this year and then I'll allow it to grow up rapidly and I actually should expect this to grow possibly twice as tall, maybe six meters in one year and the leaves are going to be much much larger. Although these leaves are large now, they have the potential to grow much larger when they're pollarded, so it'll be interesting to see how big that grows. Also, I've been quite surprised at how wind resistant it is. This has been battered around by 50 mile an hour winds. It did look really bad and it looked like it might snap, but it's actually been surprisingly strong for a branch that's really not fully lignified and become wooden yet. It's still not a fully wooden stem. At the, at the base it's fully wooden, but about halfway up and further up, it's just like a hollow stem that uh, isn't fully lignified yet, it's not fully fully wooden, but it probably will lignify over the next few weeks as it comes into the autumn time. And a little bit at the top where it's still growing, that won't be fully lignified and like wood this winter, so I probably expect the first foot or so to be killed off by the frost and the rest of the stem will survive. As I say, I will be cutting it back. Now if I wasn't to cut this back, what it does in the wild as I say is it shoots up in the, in the first year or two, really tall plant, just one stem, giant leaves, tries to smother everything else out. Once it gets to about this height, it then sends out loads of branches. You end up with a clear stem up to about the height it is now, and then you just have a normal tree, and the growth kind of slows down quite a bit. It's still the world's fastest growing tree, but it doesn't have such an impressive growth because instead of going all up in one direction, it kind of branches out, and so it's not as obvious how fast it's growing. And the leaves are also much smaller. You can see it's actually starting to do that. So, as I say, these leaves are huge. My hands are not good for scale because I'm quite tall, but these are probably the size of a dustpan lid. Really big leaves, and they will be much bigger next year when I coppice them. But you can see here on the side branches, this is the kind of leaves it grows if it's not coppiced, or if it's growing its side branches and it's more mature. They're much smaller leaves, much better suited to strong wind conditions, so these won't tear in the wind as easily as these large leaves have here. But that's the kind of thing that would happen. Loads of side branches will grow on this if I leave it and don't coppice it. And they'll just have kind of small leaves and it won't look particularly exciting. The only benefit I would get is I would get flowering on this if I was to leave it unpruned. We'd get some nice flowers forming. They have these lovely foxglove-like flowers. And if the winters are mild enough, they'll, they'll flower really well each spring. 
But I'm not growing this for the flowers because this tree can get really large really quick. I don't want a giant tree in a small garden. My plan for this is the opposite, have these giant unusual leaves and just have an impressive amount of growth in one season. So that's my best Paulonia tree so far. As I say, the genetics seem really good in this one, so I might try and take some cuttings this year if I can, because I definitely like to propagate it, because as I say, it has grown so much better than the others. I will now go ahead and show you the other plants. You'll see quite a difference. The main reason they're so much smaller is because they're in pots, they don't have the roots established. They really need to get a good root run to get this rampant growth. To turbocharge all this growth it needs a lot of water and a lot of feed and one thing to add about this growing season it was actually a, a bit slower than it could have been this growth didn't really take off till the end of the season when we started having more rain it was very dry this year a bit drought like in conditions this natively grows in China where they get a monsoon climate in the summer so this likes lots and lots of rain during the summer in the active growth phase and that really helps it to grow quickly this year was quite dry, also because this was a young plant, its roots weren't deep, it wasn't down in the water table, so it wasn't able to get a good supply of water, so it was quite slow growing. Then it really took off around July, August time, and then it's got to the size it has now. So it'll be interesting next year. Hopefully we have a bit more rain, and hopefully with the roots being much deeper, with this now being a large plant, it should really take off next year. So my other paulonia trees are all scattered around here, which is a bit of a nursery area for my garden. Now in my previous update in spring, they were a similar size to this. They weren't much smaller, because they haven't really grown much since midsummer. The reason being, as I say, is that I haven't repotted them. They're getting stunted because of the pot size. So I won't go through every one individually. If you want to see all the different interesting characteristics that they have in leaf shape, you can watch my video that I did previously in spring about that. Basically, the leaves and the hardiness varies a lot in them, so you can see some of them have nice pointy leaves like this. Other ones have much more rounded leaves or maybe less hardy to frost, such as this one here, which has almost circular leaves. So as I say, all doing relatively well, just a lot more stunted, and some of them are actually starting to drop their leaves because we're coming into autumn now, so they're starting to die back. And some of them last year did flower, Unfortunately, there's not any flowering this year. I was quite surprised that they did flower last year because normally paulonia trees need to be a bit older before they flower. This one, as you can see, it does actually have some flower buds still on it. There's a couple here from last autumn. These are dead though. These won't start to flower again. I think the frost killed that one back. But you can see here, there's no signs of flowers yet. So it doesn't look like we'll get any flowers from these. And that one over there is actually the one that, ha that had the time lapse that I showed you previously. You can see the old stem there where the flowers used to be, but the buds have fallen off because the flowers developed. It's just that little bit of dead stem kind of along there. So no flowering this year. I thought we might get some more flowering because we had flowering last year, but it'll be interesting to see as I go forward into other years, if, on, well, if ones do start to flower or not. So if I do get one which shows good signs of flowering at a young age, I'll probably plant it in my front garden and grow it for the flowers, keep it as a smaller tree. Whereas my giant one, which is over there, I'll keep you guys updated with its growth. As I say, I'm really happy with the growth so far. Three meters 10 in total height. It's probably grown about two meters 80 this year. And next year I'm thinking potentially six meters in total height, which will start taking it up towards the height of the height of the house which will be amazing to see if it does. I think my house is probably about seven or eight meters in height. So we'll see how much it grows next year. But that's all for this video and I'll see you guys next spring and we'll see how fast it grows then.